Yes, thank you very much, uh, Tony, and uh, apologies for uh, uh, imposing a, a new French accent burden today uh, in this uh, in this room. Um, Okay, so uh, very much of uh, uh, the introduction to uh, this presentation has been done by uh, Nora, and she already said a lot about uh, uh, those uh, databases. So let me go quickly in describing those uh, uh, databases uh, where people responsible for them, and then let's get into the comparison and let's get into the detail of uh, what they do and uh, uh, some of the problems uh, that uh, we find in trying to understand why they are in some cases yielding different uh, estimates of what is going on in terms of inequality in Latin American countries. CEPAL, or uh, what I would call CEPAL STAT, which is a statistical office of the uh, Economic Commission for Latin America and the Caribe in uh, uh, Santiago in Chile, they are publishing uh, since uh, quite some time their own equality measures uh, on the basis of uh, micro data that they are getting from the, uh, directly from member countries. Uh, one of the problems with uh, this uh, database is that uh, when uh, you go to their website, uh, there is no up-to-date methodological document which would describe precisely the way in which those data are being generated. Uh, I've been told by people responsible for this database that uh, they are preparing a new uh, document. At the same time, they will take that opportunity to modify some of their um, uh, methodologies. But at this stage, uh, in some cases, you really have to guess what they do uh, because uh, uh, when you go back in time, uh, people who were responsible for producing uh, those data in, uh, uh, in the 90s are not anymore there, so you are not completely sure about uh, the methodology that uh, was uh, followed. Uh, they say that the methodology is based on a rather a famous paper by Oscar Altimir uh, in 1987, which was really a comparison between household surveys and national accounts, and the main conclusion of that paper was that it was absolutely uh, crucial to correct, to adjust a survey data in order to fit the national accounts, and we will see that this is the main difference between uh, CEPALSTAT and the alternative database in the region. Poverty uh, uh, data are, uh, uh, again, their own. They are based on uh, poverty lines which, are, uh, uh, which have been estimated a long time ago by uh, CEPAL uh, people uh, based on uh, the cost of a minimum uh, diet and then uh, expanded with a standard uh, Orshansky uh, uh, coefficient. Uh, and again, this has nothing to do with international poverty lines like the $1.25 a day, uh, etc. Those poverty estimates also differ from the national poverty estimates available in the various countries, again, basically because poverty lines may be quite, uh, quite uh, different. The other database, SEDLAC, is uh, uh, the name SEDLAC, uh, the acronym SEDLAC is for Socioeconomic Database for Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, this is a joint venture between a center at, of research at the Universidad de la Plata in Argentina and uh, the World Bank Poverty and Gender Group in uh, the Latin America and the Caribbean region in, uh, in, in the bank. So they publish... Uh, their own harmonized inequality measures on the basis of the microdata, the same microdata which is used by uh, uh, CEPAL STAT, uh, and uh, basically all those countries which are in this uh, MECOVI program, which was a program where uh, it was, uh, uh, which was uh, intending, intending to harmonize uh, household survey in uh, Latin America. They have a very well documented and the fully up-to-date uh, methodology, uh, methodology. Uh, and uh, from that point of view, they are very reasonably close to what could be the best practice uh, uh, today, that is, lease 
and uh, uh, Pofcal in, uh, uh, in, in the World Bank. So database is very regularly updated. Anytime there is a new database available, immediately or in a, after a few weeks, uh, you have the corresponding data and the database, and uh, uh, this is very well organized. Finally, the poverty estimates are those uh, from Pofcal. They have an agreement with the World Bank in the sense that they are providing the harmonized microdata to the World Bank for the World Bank to compute uh, poverty uh, measures based on uh, the $1.25 a day and the $2 a day. But uh, SEDLAC also is uh, uh, computing other poverty lines which they think are better uh, in the Latin American context, which is $2.5 and $4 uh, a day. Okay, there are other data which are covering lack uh, countries. Uh, the uh, POFCAL database in the World Bank I already mentioned. LIS uh, has uh, some uh, uh, Latin American countries in its database, although most often only a very few observations, a few data points. Uh, Mexico may be the only one for which they have a rather long uh, 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 a series of uh, points, and the OECD, of course, uh, now that Mexico, Mexico has been in the OECD for quite some time, but now that Chile is in uh, uh, the OECD, uh, both countries will be also followed by, uh, by, by the OECD. And, of course, uh, the secondary database that uh, Nora uh, mentioned. So the question I want to ask are how close are the inequality measures and the poverty measures which are reported by both uh, uh, databases. Uh, I want also to uh, ask about the differences in the treatment basically of missing data and underreporting and this issue of the national account household survey gap and I will end up with a few uh, other methodological issues. This is another view to uh, a chart that Nora has shown before. This is a difference between the two databases in terms of levels of uh, inequality. These are Gini coefficients. On the vertical axis, this is the SEDLAC estimate. On the horizontal axis, this is the CEPAL stat. You have the 45-degree line. And then, as uh, Nora was saying a little earlier, uh, you see that <coughs> definitely CEPAL stat tends to overestimate uh, uh, Gini coefficients in comparison with said lag. In some cases, you can see that the difference is substantial. That's not me. Uh, uh, and what is quite, uh, uh, I think, uh, striking is the fact that the ranking of the countries is not the same. So you see that for uh, CEPAL stat, Brazil, sorry, Marcelo, is uh, the uh, most unequal country in the region, but uh, for uh, SEDLAC, uh, Guatemala, Colombia, and Honduras are more unequal than uh, Brazil. So, uh, because very often you have uh, peop uh, people papers which are uh, mentioning this kind of ranking, I think that this is not something which is completely innocuous. If instead of looking at the levels, we look at <coughs> the series. Then we see that, as uh, again Nora was saying, that the trends are more or less uh, uh, the same. Uh, uh, here I have uh, mentioned only a couple of uh, countries, Argentina uh, on the left-hand side. Uh, so the uh, top series is uh, CEPAL, and the bottom series is uh, SEDLAC, and the POFCAL data are still there, but they are very close to, uh, uh, to uh, SEDLAC. Uh, the vertical lines correspond to uh, years <coughs> where we have an observation available in the two databases, which is not always the case. And uh, the circles correspond to the case where you have discrepancy between the two databases. In one case, uh, a database says inequality is increasing very much, whereas the other database says inequality is decreasing or maybe it's remaining the same. And uh, you see that in the case of Argentina, uh, even in the recent past, in the mid-2000, there are discrepancies which are uh, quite, uh, quite important. And uh, this is really problematic because uh, as those uh, data are scrutinized by uh, politicians, by, uh, 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 by the press, uh, by all observers, uh, for a few years to have this kind of discrepancy is uh, introducing a lot of noise in, uh, uh, in, in the debate. 
Bolivia, we cannot uh, say very much about this. I mean, there is a consistency. The reason why I'm mentioning Bolivia here is that Bolivia is a country where if we believe those databases, in a few years, the Gini coefficient went down by 15 points. And I don't think this is something which is possible. I know that a lot has been going on in Bolivia. Uh, there has been a change of regime in uh, Bolivia. But to say that inequality has gone down by 15 points is something absolutely enormous. And it is quite amazing to see that in uh, neither CEDLAC uh, nor uh, CEPALSTAD there is no mention about what is going on there. And I think this is not a good job from databases of this type. Here you have Brazil. Uh, so again, there is some discrepancy on when did inequality started to decrease in uh, Brazil between the two databases. And the final one is in Mexico, where we have almost uh, the same estimates uh, for all the years, except a few years, uh, again, the circle, where there is definitely uh, one database saying that inequality is going down, whereas the other one is saying that uh, nothing much is, uh, is happening. So definitely there are discrepancies. <coughs> Here we have the same thing for poverty uh, measures. Uh, Brazil over there is uh, okay. We have uh, uh, the trends are more or less the same. Uh, uh, on the uh, right and uh, uh, at the bottom we have Mexico and we see that at least in three years there is a complete disagreement about the way in which poverty uh, evolved. Costa Rica at the top is quite nice and uh, Colombia at uh, the bottom here uh, is showing that uh, there is a, a kind of a change probably of methodology taking place in CEPALSTAT which has not been documented and which means that for one while there is a complete uh, 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 opposition between the two databases. So the overall evaluation is frequent sizable differences in levels uh, and as a matter of fact to some extent uh, uh, systematic differences for some countries. So time evolution is in general consistent over long periods but uh, very uh, uh, not infrequently there are big divergences. And uh, one thing which is worth mentioning uh, is that when, uh, and this is a comparison, uh, it was really very heavy to do that because uh, it was requiring to cover or to review all the uh, papers uh, showing some uh, treatment of those microdata uh, in the literature. But in general, it is true that SEDLAC is in agreement with uh, research papers trying to uh, see or to analyze the way in which inequality is changing in one of these countries. Uh, this morning, listening to Marcelo, I was trying to see whether his uh, uh, picture was completely consistent with that. I didn't have time to do uh, a proper job, so send me the, 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 the slide and, 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 and I will do it. And uh, I'm not sure this is a good argument in favor of SEDLAG, in the sense that very often uh, people or uh, researchers are using data which are directly coming from SEDLAC. And uh, uh, if they are using the same uh, database, uh, we have to hope that uh, they are using STATA in, uh, uh, in, in, in a rather efficient way and they will not find a very different result. So I'm not sure about what to do with that, but this is a point that is worth uh, mentioning. Uh, there is an issue with the updating. Because it happened to me that by looking at the database set like, I think, uh, at two uh, uh, time intervals, uh, I didn't find the same result because there was some updating taking place. And one of the problems when you have that is that because there is no, you don't have access to archives, uh, you don't really know what, uh, what, what happened. So it may be the case that at some stage, uh, there was uh, some series and then uh, a few months later or two years later the series has changed and uh, this is definitely something that should be documented. Let's get to the adjustment uh, for missing data and the reporting. In uh, SEDLAC uh, uh, there is uh, practically uh, no, uh, 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 no imputation made when data are missing, when uh, uh, somebody is saying that uh, uh, he or she is working as a wage worker uh, with this level of education, etc., and uh, no wage income is being reported. In the case of uh, SEDLAC, they would say, okay, fine, so 
either this is a major component of the household income, in that case we simply drop this uh, household from the sample, or it is not and we keep the uh, household and there will be a zero for that income. Uh, and uh, in the CEPAL stat, uh, they are imputing the value. They are imputing value simply by doing some matching or what, you, what they call the hot deck, which is basically to draw uh, randomly uh, somebody with more or less the same kind of characteristics and to uh, use that, uh, to, to duplicate to some extent that uh, observation. But the main correction which is done in said Palstat is because of underreporting by comparison with national accounts. So their uh, procedure is the uh, following, and I will maybe illustrate that with uh, what they do in the case of Chile. Uh, here, in the case of Chile, in this table, you have for various years the ratio between national accounts data uh, taken from the household account in national accounts divided by the corresponding uh, mean obtained in the household survey. So, for example, for wage and salaries, you see that surveys are more or less okay, we are very close to the uh, national account estimate, we have a, a ratio which is oscillating around one. If we look at self-employment, it is not the case. Now we have a ratio which fluctuates around the two, and what is problematic is that in some cases we have big changes. Uh, when you go from 1.85 in one year to 2.10 in another year, if uh, self-employment income are uh, distributed uh, in a, a non-neutral way with respect to total income, then we know that we will be producing a big change in the distribution. And of course, the worst is for a property income where the uh, under-reporting uh, is uh, close to 30% or national accounts will present in some cases uh, 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 three times what you find in household surveys. And again, what is problematic is the fact that there is a lot of uh, irregularity in that theory. Look, 2009, 1.94, 2011, 3.51. Again, because the when we do that, they instead of uh, scaling up all those incomes uh, in order to fit the national accounts, they, for property income, they only look at the top, they only do that for the top quintile. So they impute to the top quintile all the difference between the survey and the uh, national accounts. And this is, of course, uh, quite uh, problematic. When you try to do some simulation to see what is the implication of simply doing that, and what is the kind of change that we, that we obtain simply through this adjustment. And I've done some very simple simulations in the case of Chile, and if you look at the uh, uh, columns on the right-hand side, uh, for example, in uh, Chile 2011, uh, because the correction for property income is quite big, we see that without, with or without the correction, uh, uh, the Gini coefficient could go from uh, 44.8 to 46, which is something which is not negligible. But in 2009, because uh, 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 the discrepancy between national accounts and the survey was much smaller, then the uh, correction of the Gini is much uh, uh, smaller. If we were to do that in the case of Brazil, where in 2005 the underestimation of uh, property income according to national accounts was much bigger, in that case it would generate a much bigger change in the Gini. So definitely this is something important. Okay, because I'm uh, short of time, I will go very uh, quickly to the, uh, some of the main points I want to, to make. The issue here is what should we do? Should we indeed make an adjustment or not? There is definitely something we just heard about top incomes. And uh, we just know that because in many cases we are uh, ignoring or we are uh, missing the top income people, because of that we are underestimating the, uh, uh, the inequality. So should we make this adjustment to national accounts, or should we simply stick to household surveys? And uh, I don't think that there is a definite answer to that question. But uh, because 
there may be many ways to do the adjustment to national accounts. It might be certainly good first to make sure that uh, people would have access to the microdata, that uh, somewhere there would be the information what we get from the survey. Uh, and uh, at the same time, it would be important to make some consistency check with national accounts. Is it the case that when we make the kind of comparison between uh, 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 household accounts in the national accounts and the surveys, is it the case that we observe some big change in one of the ratios I've shown in the case of Chile or not? And if you don't have access, if we don't have access to uh, uh, household account in national accounts, some countries do not have a very detailed household account, then at least what we could do is look at a comparison between mean consumption expenditure in national accounts and the mean income in household surveys. Presumably, there must be some kind of uh, consistency, some kind of parallelism between those two series. And this is what is done here. And if you do that, and if you look at where the inconsistencies are, you see that in many cases, uh, if you do that, you say, okay, 2011, in the case of Brazil, there is a, a, a big drop in uh, this uh, ratio. We should go to see the survey, go to see the national accounts, and try to understand what is going on. What is the source of that change? And only by doing that, I think that we'll be, we'll be making a big progress for uh, the consistency of the distribution data or the consistency of national accounts. And I think that this is something which is very simple and uh, which uh, could uh, be done at uh, a very low cost. Three, uh, I need two minutes, uh, Tony. Uh, one remark on each of these points. Non-response. Uh, we don't see the non-response. When you receive a survey, you have all the people who have responded. But the surveyors know that they got to see, uh, they got to, to a place, and uh, there was nobody in that place, or the somebody in that place said, I don't want to answer your, uh, your, your questionnaire. Uh, we know that this non-response is not random. There is a selection. And uh, some people have worked on this. Uh, in particular, Martin Ravalian has, done, uh, has written some papers on this in the case of uh, the US. So at least the uh, national statistical offices should give information on the non-response. And uh, this would help. And this is something which applies to all household surveys, not, of course, to SEDLAC or uh, CEPALSTAT. Equivalent scales. When you compare those uh, uh, databases with lists or with the OECD, you'll find that the big difference is that there is less inequality in lists for Mexico uh, or in the OECD, basically because lists and OECD are using an equivalent scale. Whereas SEDLAC and CEPALSTAT are using income per capita. And they are doing that simply because they want to be consistent with poverty estimates. And poverty estimates, poverty lines, are defined in terms of income per capita. So the point here is to say, try to make sure that you are reporting data with at least uh, some equivalent scale and per capita, but it's not a big cost to produce this uh, multiple result. Imputed rents. Uh, maybe too big to uh, start talking about this. This is an important uh, topic. Uh, one thing, the point I wanted to make on this, imperial rent is fine. I mean, when you have uh, the owner of, uh, uh, of a house, for example, in Sedlac, if there is no information except the fact that the household is owned is uh, uh, its uh, uh, dwelling, they say, okay, we add 10% of the income to that uh, household. Why not? But if the household is acquiring this, uh, the house. They have to pay to repay uh, the mortgage. Shouldn't we uh, take into account uh, this? So the way in which imputed rent are dealt with is not completely satisfactory. Special differences in the cost of living. It doesn't cost the same thing to live in rural areas and to live in urban areas. Sedlac simply says rural areas plus 15%. Why not? But, of course, it would be much better to have some data on prices in the two uh, areas in order to, to do that. And finally, when I'm saying multiple poverty lines, 
all those people are using different poverty lines, this is fine, why not? But why don't they publish all what they find with the various poverty lines? Instead of saying the poverty headcount is so much, they should say poverty headcount is so much with $1.25 a day, it is so much with two, with four, with five, and maybe it is so much with one a poverty line that we have, uh, we have used. And I think this would be clarify very much uh, everything. I stop here.